The passive voice is that which should be avoided. The passive voice is the voice of all those who seek to dissemble, obfuscate, and otherwise cover their ass. A and Yoda. My Yoda impersonation is terrible, so I'm just going to read this. When 900 years old you reach, look as good you will not. Hmm? About the order of that sentence, something is messed up. You don't need to be a grammarian to recognize it. Subject, verb, object is for English, or sorry, object, subject, verb is for English, a very strange order to put a sentence in. It's kind of like saying this lie detector test was failed by Steve. The fact that that sentence up there is an example of the passive voice is easily recognized by you. That sentence is obviously written in the passive voice. So here's, here's the problem. The subject isn't the first thing. We have the object, the verb, and then the subject. But if you're a native English speaker, your brain is hardwired to receive meaning in a very specific order. Subject, verb, object. And anytime you mess this order up in your writing or your speakery or your speechifying or your talky talk mouth flaplitude, uh, problems are going to ensue. Bob throws the ball. It's a perfectly respectable sentence, which is pretty much the same thing as this in mathematical terms. Three times four equals 12. We sort of expect to see multiplication problems written this way. But most languages use a different order. Bob, the ball throws. Subject, object, verb. But both, both Spanish and HP calculators worth work flawlessly with this order of operation. There's nothing special about the order. It's just the one you expect in English is subject, verb, object. And this makes any change from this expected order very disorienting in English, which is a fact that bullshitters use to great advantage. Like this, an error was found in your account. What this is implying is an error error was found in your account. We don't know how it happened. Something fell from the sky. It's, it's really nobody's fault. Like it was hit by a meteor. Or how about this one? It was damaged during shipping. It's truly a classic. It was damaged during shipping. We don't know how it happened. Something probably fell from the sky and hit it, but it's really nobody's fault. There's your package. There's the unluckiest link in the global supply chain. But you can see the common theme. It's nobody's fault. So if you have a sentence where it's nobody's fault, it's probably the passive voice. But it's nobody's fault isn't usually true. Or I should say it's rarely true. And the instances where it is true uh, you don't have any other choice but to use the passive voice. Let me give you another test, uh, a simpler test, to identify whether a sentence is written in the passive voice or not. It's the zombie test. Which means if you can add by zombies to the end of a sentence and it still makes sense, you're dealing with the passive voice. For example, your civilization was destroyed by zombies. It was damaged in shipping by zombies. So this leads us to the obvious question, why do people misuse the passive voice? Well, sometimes people don't want to stand out. They want to avoid making simple declarative statements. Or sometimes uh, they're just trying to hit a page count and the passive voice is always longer than the active voice. When as circumlocutious as this you become, no page count will stop you. I'm pretty sure I, I stumped the spell checker there with the red. I, I, uh, I think that's how you spell circumlocutious. Hmm, might not even recognize it as a word. Probably be a better world if nobody recognized that as a word. But anyway, when you use the passive voice, maybe, maybe you don't want to tell the truth. 
and maybe have a good reason. Maybe somebody that you're writing for doesn't want to hear the truth or the truth will get you in trouble. Like this. Honey, an affair was had. This is so bad. The subject of this sentence doesn't even have the guts to appear in the sentence. And who can blame the subject? Because nobody wants to be the subject of that sentence. But for clarity's sake, let's tack it back on. An affair was had by me. So we can see that we have the object, the verb, and then the subject. But because we have such an expectation that we're going to get meaning in that subject, verb, object order, we kind of get fooled into thinking that the subject here is the affair. It's the first thing that appears. And while the affair is pretty important in this situation, it is not the most important thing. We have to assign some blame here. I had an affair. So the moral of the story Unless you are trying to get away with a lie, the, you should avoid the passive voice. That's really it. And scene. <laughs>